Millwright CNC is making a splash in CNC plasma with our new Alpha Arc Performance Plasma Table. This machine is packed with tons of standard and optional features that we think make it the most versatile, easy to use, and capable CNC plasma cutter anywhere in its price range. So this machine is designed for somebody that wants something beyond that entry level plasma. If you just need the most basic of plasma cutters, maybe go with that. But if you need something that has high-end features not found in those competing machines, then you need to take a look at the Alpha Arc. The Alpha Arc is a 50 by 50 cutting area that maximizes the metal working capability of your shop and is packed with features that make your work fun, efficient, and easy. Why did you launch the Alpha Arc? So when we talk to people on the phone or at a show, uh, we take a really consultative approach to sales. Uh, we want to find out what they need and if what we're selling them doesn't accomplish uh, what they need to accomplish in their machining operations or in their hobby or in their manufacturing, I don't want to sell it to them. And we found that sometimes we were talking to customers uh, and what they really needed was a plasma cover instead of one of our CNC routers. So we decided, hey, we need to provide a plasma cutter. We need an answer to this need. So our product development is just really tied to what customers are asking for. So the Alpha Arc was the answer to that. What makes the Alpha Arc special? Uh, so there's a lot of CNC plasmas on the market, right? Like we know we checked out what's going on in the market. We did a lot of market analysis to see what features were available at different price points. And I'll tell you, if you want the most basic plasma cutter that will kind of sometimes cut a couple of shapes for you, then there's another machine out there for you. So we sought to differentiate the Alpha Arc from others by taking a lot of the features that were in just really high-end plasmas and putting them into something a little more compact and something definitely not at that top-end price point. So it's special because it's not too far from that entry level price, but it's packing in a lot of features that are going to make a difference in the performance of the cut and how easy it is to use and your overall enjoyment and productivity with the machine over something that's just a basic machine. What are some of those features? Well, there's probably more that I can list, but I think if you start at the frame of the machine, we've got a heavy duty machine. It's running linear rails and a rack and pinion system. A lot of the machines that you see out there are gonna use belts or roller wheels or other low end mechanisms, but we went with nice components so you have a precise machine. Now that's just a starting point. Beyond that, you've got an excellent control system in the Masso control. You should look up the G200 Masso G-code. Um, that wraps a bunch of plasma functionality into one code, makes it easy to edit things. They have a good plasma interface built into this. Um, so I think it's a great choice for running plasma. And you don't see a lot of manufacturers using the Masso for plasma machines. I, I think they're missing out on its capabilities there. Uh, going past that, some other cool electronics. You've got automated torch height control. So if you're not familiar, if you've got a sheet with some warp to it, which is always the case with sheet metal, um, that torch is going to adjust automatically and you're going to have a better cut that way and you're going to improve your consumable life. You've got torch breakaway detection. So if you collide with something or part pops up and it breaks that torch off even just a little bit, you're going to get an alarm here and you're going to know that you've got to stop the job and with the Masso you can resume from there. Uh, you've got floating head uh, plate detection so it'll come down and there's a little uh, couple linear bearings and a spring in there. And that's useful in certain circumstances for detecting your plate. In other circumstances that we could get into in a separate video you might want to use our omic sensing plate detection. We've got that built in as well so the two most common methods of plate detection we built in both of them and you can easily toggle between that within your Masso control. 
We've got a front roller that makes loading a heavy sheet a lot easier. If you've ever had to load like a half inch sheet or even a quarter inch sheet or some 10 gauge, it's gonna be a lot easier with this roller that comes standard with the machine. Uh, you have an optional air blast system, or excuse me, air ballast system. So if you wanted to drop the water level on the machine, you could do that using the air ballast. There are two different valves that you turn. Uh, one just drains the water, the other lets in air pressure into a ballast tank and raises the tank. You've got about three eighths to half of an inch of variable height using that optional air ballast. Now that can be really helpful if you're say cutting aluminum. There are some dangers to letting gas accumulate underneath that plate, so you might need to drop your water level to let that gas escape. You should check out on YouTube some uh, accidents that have happened if you don't cut aluminum the proper way with a plasma cutter. But uh, if you wanted to use our laser cutter, say you, you were cutting some steel and now you want to move up and you want to cut some colored acrylics with our laser cutter, you could drop that water level with the optional ballast system, slap on that laser head, and now you've got a half sheet laser machine. Uh, you've got a pipe cutting attachment that is an option where you could cut almost a full four foot pipe. You're talking square pipe, you're talking round pipe, um, and then all of that you're going to you're going to make those cuts with a Hypertherm Powermax 45 sink that we offer. If you wanted to use something else in the Hypertherm line that has 40, or excuse me, that has a CPC port, you could do that. So our electronics uh, interface with that using their CPC port, that's a pretty standard thing that uh, was it, is within the Hypertherm line of plasma cutters. So if you already had, say, an older 45 XP, you could use that. But if you get the 45 sync from us, I think you're going to have a better experience because you're going to be able to take that one consumable off instead of having to deal with all of these different uh, components and evaluate like, is this one bad? Is that one bad? Does it need replacement? You have one unit. You can put an app on your phone and you can scan that using the sync reader and you can get data on uh, how many times has it pierced? What kind of faults have you experienced? That's going to make it easier for you keeping track of how long you use a consumable, when you need to change it out. It's going to maximize your savings and your uh, your cost per cut. I think it's going to come lower using the sync system. So there's a lot of stuff jam-packed into this. I think we've checked pretty much all of the boxes when it comes to user experience, when it comes to reliability, when it comes to performance. So let's talk a little bit about the head of the Alpha Arc. So anytime I handle this, I like to put the torch on safety on the Hypertherm torch. When you see the yellow here in the X, then it's on safety. And when you push it down and see the green, it's ready to operate. So again, I have it on safety. This is a magnetic torch. So we've got this magnetic breakaway. There's a breakaway sensor here. It's an inductive switch that whenever it gets just a little bit away from this little pocket here, it's gonna trigger a torch breakaway alarm on the control. We have eight magnets here to hold it really well. And we're using the heads of these screws that you can jack in and out to get them seated in really well so you don't have any wobble there. Now, beyond that, the head has got uh, a float to it. So there are two bearings behind this and a spring that returns it. So as the torch is pushing down, let's just demonstrate that. If I'm pushing, if I'm driving down and pushing, you will trigger this switch here and you can use that to set your height or you can use the ohmic sense that we have built in and that will allow you whenever it just touches the material it's going to let it know that it's reached the correct height. So there's something in the mass of control that knows what this distance is here, and it knows whether or not you're using ohmic sensing or the floating head sense. So I've been talking about this sync system with Hypertherm. So this is a sync reader, and it runs about 50 bucks. It's gonna make evaluating things a lot easier. And if you had to communicate with our tech support and you were trying to diagnose anything, having one of these sync readers is gonna make it a lot easier 
for us to help you. It comes with this little silicone band to keep up with it. I just slide it over the pole mount uh, on my Masso control. So to take a reading here, I'm first going to set my torch to the safety. Uh, again, if you show the yellow, it's on safe. Not something you have to do, but I, I think it's a good habit. I'm just gonna pop off this on my green and just a little bitty turn and I've got my sink cartridge off. So these cartridges, uh, everything's built in. You've got the nozzle and the swirl ring and all that built in. So to take a reading, all you do, take this, stick it in the back there. It doesn't snap in or anything, you just hold it to the back, all right? I'm gonna whip out my phone and pull up this Hypertherm app. And from here, I just scan now. It tells you exactly what you need to do. I'm going to start the scan, and you've kind of got to get it in the right place in your phone. Boom, it's already picked that up. I'll tell it I'm done, and from here I can look at everything and see all the data, like what's my arc on time, um, what faults has it detected. It's a really useful tool to maximize uh, your consumable life and to be able to relay information uh, to tech support should you need it. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit about uh, the massive functionality with Plasma. Uh, you'll notice here that this is it's an internal alpha release. Don't worry about that. This is a version that uh, Mass has provided to us because they have uh, given us something here, this uh, Plasma Omic Enable that is not in uh, production versions of uh, Masso controls right now. And what that is is uh, you have to have an isolation uh, between the ohmic sense and the rest of the unit. Uh, we have a special isolation module that does that and it needs to be toggled um, before and after uh, the torch is going to fire. So it says alpha release. Uh, this feature is about to come mainline uh, by the time we uh, would prepare to ship these units. So you have uh, all the regular screens that you're used to in Masso. Uh, we set everything up here to have the plasma head enabled, and that is tool 112, so we already have that enabled. When you come over to the SD screen, you've got all of your plasma information. This is fed in from your G200 command. So uh, I don't have any G code loaded right now, but if you could look and uh, if you could look at an example of G200 there, it populates all of these parameters. You can even keep track of your Pierce count. Now, with the sync system that we're using, that's not as useful to us, but if you're using another system, it's still uh, quite useful. Uh, because we're using the Masso Torch Height Control, you're also going to get information from that THC, like you would get live arc voltage. Um, if you saw the THC traveling up or down, um, that'll be displayed on the screen, whether the plasma's on or off. You're gonna get all of that information uh, you can change your uh, torch height control voltage up and down a little bit. A lot of on-the-fly adjustments. Uh, we think that this is a really well thought out approach to controlling a plasma and we're excited to be one of the first manufacturers that's going to incorporate the Masso control into a plasma system. So loading a heavier sheet, like this is a piece of quarter inch steel, is a lot easier with this roller on here. The roller comes standard with every machine. So I can slide it up. Last few inches I'm going to put in. It's done most of the work for me. There we go. So really easy to set up for the fourth axis. There's a few screws to put this extension on and that's gonna transfer the breakaway detection and everything forward and allow the torch to get over the bed and in range of the fourth axis. So I'm gonna take our roller off and to do that, I'm just gonna push. See how you've got a little play here? You just push all the way against that bracket. I like to use my chuck key, but you can use anything. And I'm just gonna press that in there. I'll pull that out and I'll set that to the side. Now, so I'm gonna cut this pipe. All I have to do, put in the head chuck. Everything's off right now so I can spin it easily. And because I'm chucking on the inside, I'm gonna turn. It's actually gonna be lefty tidy. Now this here, 
The tail stock is going to slide the entire way. We've got this bearing here that comes as part of the fourth axis. I'm just going to slide that in there and tighten it the same way. All right. And here we'd be able to do some uh, rotor rework with the fourth axis. So the head, I'm just going to pull the machine gently forward here. The head comes over and it'll be in range. When the extension is not on, you actually, by design, can't come all the way up to the edge here to prevent you from cutting into your table. So that's the fourth. Simple to use. And you can do almost four feet of pipe, square or round, with the fourth axis on the Alpha Arc. So here we have our optional ballast system that you heard me talking about. It's pretty simple. It's operated by two different valves. There's a ballast tank down there. Uh, there's a manifold that your air is going to attach to, and then we give you an air hose uh, that comes off of that manifold that you can use for blowing down wet parts as they come off the plasma. So this ballast tank holds about five gallons, which is enough to drop it from three-eighths to a quarter of an inch. So if I wanted to raise the water level, I just close the valve um, that's the release, and then I'm going to open up this and you start to see water bubble up a little bit. If you get too much, you can blow some off as you're going. And the blowdown, we'll leave that open and it'll slowly raise that. You don't want to just open this and walk away because then it's gonna keep feeding air through and you're gonna have a bubble storm here. So I'm gonna use that to raise the tank. And let's say I thought I was a little high, I shut that see the bubbling subsides and if I want to blow it off I just open this and it's going to start dumping air and the excess that it spits will just come through this little manifold and uh, blow back into the tank so really simple system but it gives you some opportunities to move around that water level a little bit again if you're cutting aluminum or you need to drop it to do some laser cutting a lot of different options so I wanted to show you guys the water tables that are going to come on these machines. Um, this is the most recent version that we're using, and there's just one more little iteration uh, we're going to have here where we're going to install baffles, um, and that will be the final change to them. But there'll be baffles in the event that you overpressured your ballast system. That's going to keep uh, water from shooting up as it, as it comes, that fill air from the ballast. These are made of 14 gauge steel. We've got a hem bend on the front. So as you're pushing material onto the table, you've got a nice uh, rigid durable surface there that you don't have to worry about wearing out. We do recommend that you use a plasma green or something similar in here. You noticed how our water was green in there. That's gonna really minimize rust and make this thing last for years. It's welded right here in the U.S. Um, this is one thing we did not do in our shop because we're so-so at welding, so we pushed it out to another shop. Um, we've got gussets welded in on the side. We have four slat supports that are uh, welded in there. And then, of course, it's going to come with slats to hold your material up.